Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Italy Wine Lands, the show where I take you to the lands of wine in Italy. Well, I said it twice, but that's where we're going. Isn't that amazing? Every day I'm going to take you to the different wine land. This time I'm not talking about a specific label, but rather I would like I would like to take you to the Appalachian. What appellation is today? Today is Bulgari. Bulgari is a very new appellation, it's on the Tuscan coast. Uh, you have to imagine how everything kicked off in the 60s. So, unlike other appellations like uh, Barolo, Brunello, Chianti Classico, that are really old in Italy, or even the, the Salerno, where Falerno, where the Romans used to make wine, maybe the oldest appellation ever in the world, here, it's something new. Why is it new? Because Bulgari has never been really an area for most for, for important wines. It was about rosés and lots of fruit orchards. Now, Bulgari became uh, one of the world's most famous wine lands because a gentleman whose name is Mario Incisa della Rocchetta, yes, I'm going to mention a name because without him, we wouldn't have Bulgari right now. Mario is the person that invented Sassicaia, you know, we talked about it. You can go check it on my YouTube channel. As a matter of fact, if you haven't done it yet, please, man, subscribe, put down your comments, and go check the episode on Sasikaya. So I'm not going to mention it here again, but the world, one of the world wine revolutions started off thanks to Marion Cisa La Roqueta here in Bulgari. And after that, after the 60s, when Sasikaya won this great competition. Everybody started to flood. You have to imagine how this is an area that is like, a, right now is 1,300 hectares, which is like a, a good acreage for a, an appellation. But there used to be only 150, 180 hectares altogether until the early 90s. That's in the in the nineties is when everything changed. When Sassicaia became now, you know, Parker gave it a hundred points, and with the eighty five vintage, and now everybody's flooding in. Or oh, lots of entrepreneurs, lots of uh, vigneron of the area, starting to put out label that were more and more important by the day. So, what is the specifics of this appellation? Well, first of all, to begin with, is right on the ocean, is right on the Mediterranean Sea. Three kilometers away, you have the first vineyard. So you start on the flat land. Imagine this. This is the seaside land, right? And I'm taking you like this. From west, I'm taking you east like this. Flat, 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 flat. You have Bulgari. Now, this is the Via Bulgarese. So from the sea, there is roughly, what can I say? Let me think, like 10 kilometers tops. And you have the Via Bulgarese that goes across Castagneto Carducci to Bulgari for 10 kilometers. Via Bulgarese is important because it's the borderline between the flat land on the sea level, almost. And there you start going all the way uphill, all the way up to... 400, 500 meters above the sea level. So when we talk Bulgari, first of all, you want to understand whether is a flat land or more on the hilly side, because there's going to be a difference mainly with regards to wind. Wind is important to make the grapes healthy, so there is a little bit cooler, there is a temperature drop during the night that is paramount. What else is important in Bulgari? The presence of the sea makes this area one of the most, do you, can you say luminous, one of the areas where there is more sunlight uh, in terms of viticulture, and the vine loves light, particularly Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc love it so much. Did I see international varieties in an Italian appellation? Yes, I did. And Bulgari is the place where Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Syrah, Petit Verdot, you name it. These varieties are the main varieties. Actually, Cab Sauv accounts for 50% of the total appellation. So it's a little bit like a Napa Valley in a way. Um, the sea is much closer than, than, than it would be in Napa Valley. We don't have the Golden uh, Gate Bridge, so there's no Alaskan uh, uh, cold winds uh, that comes through and the currents that make all the foggy afternoon in, uh, in Napa. But uh, there is a beautiful Mediterranean forest that surrounds the vineyards. And there is, once again, the Cabsov 
So, <laughs> and when it comes to wines in Italy, people think about, you know, wine areas just, and they think vineyards and cellars. Well, in Italy, it's very different. Like you have thousands and thousands of acreage and only a few hundreds of, uh, of vineyards, acreage of forest, of beautiful um, uh, little hilltop villages, Castagneto Carducci. Bulgari alone is like strolling in a one of those cartoon design villages. You know what I'm saying? Like you can sit down in one of these beautiful restaurants with the patio outside and have what? Wild boar, par pardelli. Uh, you can have some beautiful T-bone steak. There's lots of meat actually over in Bulgari. Lots of game, uh, which is, goes really well with the Cabernet-based wines. And yes, Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, you know, pe most people are accustomed to the idea of a, a Bordeaux Cab Sauv, which is, uh, you know, has got a lot of green elements into it because of the latitude and because of the ocean. In Bulgari, there is way more maturity, so way more prunes, black driven fruit, lots of balsamic edges. And then Merlot comes into place, above all in the cooler vintage is pretty good. In Bulgaria, guys, you know, I mentioned about Sassicaia, but the re that's the home of one of the world most famous Merlot, Maceto. I can say the names because these guys have become like cult wines. As a matter of fact, are you curious to go check out about these cult wines? Go on Radio Cult Wines. That's the, our show where we talk about these cult wines. But yes, Merlot can be vinified 100% and Cabernet Franc can be vinified 100%. So it's an incredible experimental uh, appellation, but where today, after 50 years, winemakers have grown so much. So now you can talk about the different terroirs as well. Well, um, what else? You know, something that always makes you feel that you are in Bulgari is the generosity of the fruit. That's the beauty of Bulgari. That is ready to drink when young, but there is aging potential. But at the same time, it's so easy to understand for people that are novice in this industry. they are new wine lovers. Always love Bordeaux for its suppleness, velvety character, lots of fruit, juice. But... Wine lovers love it as well because of the structure, character, and length. So this is the land. I'm sure you've heard of the word Super Tuscan. Go check out my episodes where I talk about it. But this is where the first Super Tuscans was ever invented. So when you come across to modernly made transplanted Bordeaux varieties, Bulgari is the place where basically almost everything began. From the winelands of Italy, this is Filippo Bartolotta. Follow me. Check out my website, check out my social media, and uh, cheers to everyone. Have a great Super Tuscan day.